So I'll wait for an OK on that one before I continue. Okay, and let's make sure that uh, we can see the screen that I want to share. <coughs> and this is actually the last slide, but we're going to start from the first slide. So it sounds like we came from Czechoslovakia, now we're going down to Beverly Hills, we're traveling around the world. I'm going to start by saying that uh, actually I'm not going to try to sell you anything. We're not here to sell any product. Uh, I'm going to try to share observations and education that I honestly believe will help you. Uh, what you're going to see is I've been a broker for 16 years. So imagine me to a coach, a basketball coach, who sees a lot of players, a lot of things taking place, and uh, can give you some very useful tips. So I'm confident that by the end of the presentation, you're going to go walk away and take at least two to four useful tools, ideas to make you a better trader. And <clears throat> let's start by going over the disclaimer. Uh, trading commodity futures and options involves substantial risk of loss. The recommendations contained in this presentation are, are of opinion only and do not guarantee any profit. These are risky markets and only risk capital should be used. Past performance are not necessarily indicative of future results. And if you want my, uh, my version of it is if you don't have risk capital, don't play in this, in this game. This is a tough game and scared money has barely any chance to make it if at all. So make sure that whatever you do, you use risk capital. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do today, I think, is actually more valuable than learning another indicator or talking about a chart formation. Because I've seen many clients and uh, many traders that spend hours on indicators, the charts, the how do I enter, how do I exit, and they spend very, very little time about money management, trade management, and trading psychology. And as a broker, I've seen thousands of clients. And I got to say, I've seen a lot of clients that know how to make money. Yet I've seen very, very few clients or traders that know how to lose money. And that's, that's a big point that I'm going to be talking about today. So we're going to go over an actual money management concept that you can sit down with a pen and paper or calculator and figure out for you what will pre be the proper daily money management. And I'll expand on that quite a bit. I'm going to share with you some tools that hopefully will help you create a positive trading technology, trading psychology and uh, help you as you trade. Uh, I'm going to share some ideas of how to deal with fear and greed, which I think are, are big. Uh, we'll touch about defining and measuring your success. And as we go, I'm going to be throwing all kind of observations that I've had over the years. Uh, so it may look sporadic at time, it may sound sporadic at time, but you will hear and understand some, some good concepts. Um, before I start with the actual presentation, a little bit about Canon Trading Company. Uh, we are one of the only very few independent introducing brokers in this business, in my opinion. I think uh, many of the introducing brokers nowadays are guaranteed, uh, and that gives us the freedom to clear our trades with different clearing firms. So we do offer over 10 different trading platforms. Uh, we clear with multiple FCMs. We've been here since 1988 in Beverly Hills, California. And I think our website has a lot of good information. And I'm going to go later on with more specifics, but multiple data feeds for Ninja, different trading software, different educational tools that you can go from uh, visiting our tools. We have a daily blog that I'll go over for a little bit as well. So this is Canon Trading. And myself, I'm a broker. I've been a broker since 1998. Uh, I played college basketball, and then I played professional basketball overseas. Uh, as a broker slash commodity trader, I wrote more than a few articles for several publications. Uh, also had the pleasure and the honor of being a guest speaker in a webinar by the Chicago Board of Trade that is no longer exist since the CME bought it. And in addition, I'm also 
the trading principle for Levix Capital Management, which is a commodity trading advisor. And when I started working as a commodity broker very, very shortly after, we started offering online trading. And uh, our rate, I remember it was $22 a round turn. That was our discount rate for online trading. We were one of the first few that offered online trading for futures. And uh, it's amazing how much the industry has evolved, technology, and also the popularity of futures trading. Most traders do lose money. Uh, that's what I see as a broker. And there's many different reasons, and you're going to see here the major ones as I see them. Uh, a lot of traders come in undercapitalized. Uh, they may have unrealistic expectations. They think if they start with 5,000, they should have 10,000 in the account by next week. A lot of time, a trader comes into this field without real experience other than demo. And there is a big difference between demo trading and live trading. Uh, the fear and greed when it comes to futures trading uh, really intensify. As it is, futures trading offers you a higher degree of leverage than almost any other financial instrument. Then add to that is day trading where a lot of companies, including Canon Trading, we can offer you $500 day trading margins for the mini S&P, for example. So all of a sudden, every little tiny point on the mini S&P is $50. And a trader can come in with $2,500 and be long or short five contracts. And in 30 seconds, he's up or down $250, $500, which is a big percent of their account. And that really intensified that uh, fear and greed factor. Uh, the next two are probably the biggest one. Discipline. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen clients that just, they know what they have to do, they understand what they need to do, and yet they cannot control themselves, and they do things they're not supposed to, and that create a, a, an avalanche of mistakes, revenge trading, and so much more. Uh, another, another factor that I've witnessed is the lack of confidence, meaning the trader does not believe in their method, the system, and I'll touch base on that as well. Because uh, sometimes traders do have a good method and a good system. But being unrealistic, they expect that their system or method will make money every day. Does not happen. And if it does, I've never seen it. So even when you have a good method and a good concept, you have to understand that you will have days where that system method is not going to perform well and it's part of trading. So question being asked for negative Nancy Elon is, why even bother? Because I really think that uh, if you have the, the time, the risk capital, and you have the personality and you're able to acquire and sustain successful trading skills, it can probably be one of the most rewarding jobs you can have. Again, very, very few make it, but if you are one of those, you're a master of your own time. Uh, you are your own boss. You can take a day off whenever you want. If you have a good day, you know, and that's what I tell many of my clients, that I see, hey, after two hours, they're up. They reach their target. And we're going to talk about that, about setting a daily profit target. And I ask him, why are you still trading? Just shut down, say thank you, go have lunch with your son, go play golf, uh, go do whatever you want, or even if you want to spend time doing more research. So that's one of it. And I wrote uh, a quick two-page uh, article. And if you guys would like to read it, just Use the email on the screen, screen it's Kim at CanonTrading.com, and she'll send you a copy of the PDF. And it's talking about how day trading successfully is, very, is not easy. But it is, there's some steps that you can take in order to get there. And it starts by education. Uh, finding a method, concept, system of trading. Uh, setting up goals. Then you get to the point that hopefully you're surviving, meaning you did not lose your account in the first few months. You gain experience. You learn your setups, what are successful setups, and when to attack and when to play defense. And hopefully you achieve successful trading. 
And the question is, what is successful trading? And the answer will be different for each one of us, and that's another point I'm going to touch base on. Okay. So, talking again about negative psychology for a minute. Uh, the fear, the greed, uh, not understanding risk. All this can really create a situation where you're trading and you're not feeling comfortable, your stomach is really tight, uh, your hands are sweating, you probably drank a few cups of coffee and you're dying to go to the bathroom and you don't want to leave the screen because you're just not in the right frame of mind. and You're not in the right psychology of trading, in my opinion. And one trick that I found that helped me with fear and greed is trading multiple contracts. I'm talking here about discretionary trading because uh, as of the last year or so, I've been doing mostly automated trading of systems that I've designed simply because my main job is being a broker. And as a broker, I talk to clients, I answer my phone, I answer emails, I assist online, self-directed broker assist clients, etc. But I've done, I've done thousands of trades that are discretionary trading on behalf of clients. Uh, for broker assist clients, for managed accounts. And what I found was that it's very hard for me if I'm using one contract. So even if I trade 10 lots, but I'm trying to decide to either exit all or stay in with all, it was much harder than me trading, let's say, two or three contracts and, uh, and taking a small profit on the first one, for example. I found out that that really allowed me to relax and be like, oh, okay, I got my profit. I'm breathing better, and now I can actually analyze the market. I can analyze the chart a little bit better. And if you're using, you know, multiples of three, then I would set my second target at a level close to support and resistance. And let me see if I can take a look at my chart here. We'll bring it up. So, you know, I like to use some uh, volume profile lines on the charts and uh, use them to assist me in setting up uh, profit targets and stuff. But I found out that, okay, now I took profit on the first one, I can actually feel relaxed, I managed to, to trade much better, and I'm making much better decisions. Okay, So for me, that really eliminated two main enemies, the fear and the greed. And I want to show you, I mean, we offer, again, pretty much any platform you can think of, we offer. But what I want to show you is uh, a trading platform that we call Shogun Trade Executor that I'm going to load right now. I really like that sound file. I think it's cool. But I'm going to log into a demo account. And bear with me while I, I take a sip of my my tea. And load up the chart and the trading software. All right, so these, these are the charts that come with our Shogun Trade Executor. And let me see if I have anything here. Yep, I have one of my charts. So it's probably symbols that I need to roll up, roll over. And we are in rollover day, by the way. If you are stuck in the crater, uh, today, September becomes a fun month. I personally start trading September tomorrow, not today. Because the June volume is still higher. I mean, the contract volume is still higher in June today than it is in September. But as of tomorrow, I'll be trading September contracts for the mini S&P, mini Russell, uh, Dow, etc. And if you are a currency trader, uh, make sure that you're out. out of the June by tomorrow and start trading September. Currencies are deliverable uh, contracts, so be careful there. Okay, so I'm going to minimize the chart and show you what I'm talking about as far as setting up the 
multiple exits. And we will share with you how to get a free trial of this trading software if you're interested. We'll do that a little bit later. Hey. Let's say you're trading multiples of threes. Very easy to go into the properties and hit multiple exits. One lot, one lot, one lot. And I'm gonna put and I'm gonna set my first target, let's say to five ticks, uh, my second one to eight ticks, and last one for sixteen ticks, which is four SP points. That will be group A. Group P I'm going to set for the crude oil market and I use different settings. So I'm going to go ahead and say 11 points for the first one. Uh, let's go ahead with 21 for the second one. And 20, let's make it 36 for the third one. And if uh, this will be group B. And if times allow and the market setups, we're going to actually go over some trade setups later on. But at least you can see that how easy it is that once, if I check the auto buttons, which I will do, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead with the multi bracket. I'm going to set my stop loss. Okay, and I'm going to check auto. And let me see if I got anything going on here. It doesn't, doesn't look like it. Let me check my other chart. At this point, I don't have any setup for a trade. But if we have a setup, I'll go over the setup and show you how easy it is to place the multiple exits. And actually, just for example, let's say we wanted to go ahead and, and buy right now three mini SMP. Uh, to put the order, very, very easy. I can, I just hit join the bid, and I just got triggered being long three. And this is just for example. This is no, no trade indicator or anything like that. As you can three, my see my stop on all three is 35 even right here under the stop my first target my second target and somewhere all the way on top is my third target and this is actually part of making your trading more mechanical and I'm going to touch base on that as well okay. Let's go back to the slide we're on. And as I mentioned, I'm going to jump from topic to topic, but pay attention, keep stay focused. I'm not going to try to sell you any miracle indicator here or how to make money or any unrealistic secrets that don't exist. There is no crystal ball. But what I will teach you is more than a few things that can really help you regardless of the method you're using for trading, regardless of what markets you trade, if it's stocks, futures, forex. Uh, those are univer universal elements that, that can really assist you. So let's talk about money management. Okay, uh, Something, a topic that traders neglect. I hear clients, they're talking to me about the RSI, and they're talking to me about the stochastic, and about this uh, algorithm that they found on the internet that they're going to pay $300 a month or 5000 to buy or lease. Yet they spend very little time but something that I think is extremely important, that's money management. And <clears throat> as you could see from uh, uh, the Shogun Trade Executor, the first thing that I think one needs to do is put a stop on every trade. Yes, some professional traders or more experienced traders will tell me, ah, I don't place a stop. Right, I heard it and I've seen what happened when they use the mental stop. Nine out of ten times, they'll get out better. And then the tenth time, all of a sudden, the market take a dump or jumps against them so hard, and they wipe their account. So for all those professionals out there that say, I don't use a stop, my, my pure personal opinion is you're completely wrong. So have a stop. Have a stop for trade. Now let's take it to the next level. And I think this is a key, key ingredient of this presentation. One should have a daily money management, a daily loss limit, or what I call a stop on your trading day when you lose a certain amount of money. Okay, Take it another step forward. You should have responsibility. If you're starting an account with 10000 when you start the account, 
few questions that you need to ask yourself. First of all, is it risk capital? If I lose this money, is my wife going to get upset with me? Which is fine, but is it going to change my lifestyle? Am I still going to be able to pay my bills or not? Then you should ask yourself, can I afford taking uh, uh, a loss of 5000 or 6000 How am I going to feel? And you need to set that up, meaning you need to say, okay, I'm starting with 10000 but if I'm losing 6000 which is 60% of my account, maybe I should take a break, stop trading, and reassess. you got to be responsible, and, and, and that's a big thing in my opinion. I've seen way too many unresponsible traders that are very, very reckless with their money, very reckless with their trading. So the next step is let's figure out how we can actually calculate uh, the numbers. So I did open already the trade the, the Shogun Trade Executor, and I'm just going to take you to a quick show you where you can sign up for it, uh, and I'm going to review some of the features that the Shogun Trade Executor offers. Over, over other platforms, etc. But give me one second, and I want to show you how you can sign up for a free demo. This is actually the panic button, as we call it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell the panic button to go away, so it doesn't interfere with our presentation. Hide panic button. Okay. So if you're interested in getting a free trial, actually it's the easiest thing. Go on the front page and click on Shogun Trade Executor. Scroll down and you can try a free demo. No obligation. You get live free charts. You get the trading software that I'm presenting and I will touch base on it a little bit more. keeps coming back to the beginning. I know there's a way to make it go back to the slide where you stop. Okay, so now let's talk about how to actually come up with a number of how much you should have as a daily loss limit, which is another feature that Shogun has, meaning we can actually hard code via the software, via our clearinghouse, that if you tell us you want your daily loss limit to be a thousand bucks, and you had one of those days that things just don't work out and trading does not go as well as you think or would like, you're down a thousand. The software, the risk software, the risk manager will cancel working orders, will liquidate your position and lock you out and tell you time out, you need to take a break. And that's what I'm talking about as far as hard coded daily money management. So how does one figure out how much that, that number should be? Uh, first thing, we got to start from the top. How much risk capital are you planning to allocate for this adventure? Let's talk about 10,000, for example. You got to ask yourself, do I have more capital if necessary? If I feel that I actually I lost the money, but I feel like I know what I need to do in order to have a chance, in order to make it, do you have more? Then you got to think about your risk tolerance, which is very different. I know that personally, as a, as a CTA, Commodity Trading Advisor, I have no problems losing when I lose three, four, five hundred dollars $500 per contract, one contract traded, for my CTA account. When I have those days where I'm down 900 800 1000 1100 I get that, uh, that, that unpleasant feeling that I don't like. And that's me, personally. And that's talking about using a 25000 per unit account size. But that's much different than when somebody is a self-directed client and, and you're not managing other people's money, you're actually trading your own money. So you may be able to handle $1,000 a day if you have a $10,000 account. I've seen other traders with half a million account that the most they can handle is 10000 so the ratio there is quite different. Then you got to ask yourself, what if I'm hitting a really bad period and I'm losing $1,000 three days in a row? Can I handle that? Okay. Then the next step is you really need to see, can you quantify your method of, method of trading into how many trades a day? Uh, <clears throat> and, if the, and if the answer is yes, then you actually need to start 
doing some work, keeping a journal, which is another topic I'm going to talk about. I find out what is your average trading per day. Uh, my average trades per day with the trading system that I'm doing right now is about five. Okay. So let's continue with this example. And let's say your average number of trades per day is four. And the max loss per trade, according to the methodology that you're using, is $100 per contract. And let's talk about the popular mini S&P, two mini S&P points. And by the way, if there is no max loss per trade, you need to start working with one. So as I told you before, I've seen it before. People, will, traders will average in, average down, average up. And they'll start, oh, I haven't made, I made it out of it. The market went down, but it hit a bounce, and I was able to come out of it. They'll do it one time, second time, third time. Somewhere between there and the tenth time, they're going to lose everything and then some. So again, figure out where's a stop. Even if it's a worst-case scenario stop, meaning a 10 mini S&P points or whatever it is. Okay. So based on the example above, uh, we know that potentially you can lose $400 per contract on an average day. And if we use the example of a $10,000 account size, I would personally trade two contracts. Just based on this on this math that I'm doing right now in front of you and, and trying to set some, uh, some hardcore numbers as far as what my risk should be per trade, what my daily risk should be, and going from there. And obviously you cannot... I don't think you can just put on every trade a, a two-point stop loss. You got to take a look at the chart, see where support and resistance is, previous highs, lows, and advance from there. But that gives you a framework that if you code it in the software, then you're going to go ahead and be able to adjust it based on what the chart's showing you. And continuing with this mathematical calculation, now I know that I'm exposed to approximately $800 loss per day. Yeah, some days it may be $850, $900, there's a little bit commission. That should already make me a little bit more comfortable to know what is my risk. If I know what my risk is, I think, for me, that helps trade in a much better uh, frame of mind, much better mental focus. Okay. Once you set that up, and I hope that uh, there are some newcomers here that will listen. If you set the daily loss limit, it can help you from having one of those days that anybody who traded more than two or three months know what I'm talking about. It's when things just don't go the way you want them. And all of a sudden, you just kind of lose it. And you start averaging down. And you start reversing. And you revenge trading. And before you know it, you forgot. You're trading crude oil, but there's an API report. And now crude oil is a full dollar and a half against you. And before you know it, instead of an $800 loss, you're down six, seven thousand 7000 out of your 10000 And at the end of the day, you're like, oh, my God, what have I done? Why did I do that? I can't believe it. And it's like, it's, it's a knockout. It really is a knockout. So setting the hardcore daily loss limit, even if you call your broker afterwards and you say, you know, Elon, I lost $800. Uh, please reset me. I will probably tell you if you're my client, why don't you take a 10, 15-minute break? Go have a bagel, go have a coffee, or smoke a cigarette if you smoke. And let me know if you still want to do it because you're defeating the purpose. But just the fact that you're going to be in a timeout will save you from having one of those days that many traders have experienced before that, uh, that wipe their accounts out. So I wrote a whole article about it with more examples. And it's probably a little bit uh, easier to understand when you read it black and white was published in Stocks, Futures, and Options magazine back in July 2007. And again, if you want a copy, feel free to email Kim at Canon Trading, and she will send you the article as a PDF. Okay. So let's go over it again just to, to give you the di diagram of how I reach the daily loss limit, which is I think is a big concept. And you can scroll through it for a second while I take a 30 seconds break here. And I'll be right with you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you something on my CQG system, which is another trading platform that we offer. Uh, where I kind of got a lot of my uh, 
logic and uh, foundation for this concept is because I I design systems and I still design systems and I trade systems. Meaning this is a, right here you see an automated trading system that is right now in a live position with still long bonds on my other machine from 135.03. Uh, when I got in, I had a worst case scenario stop right here. As I made a little bit of profit, the stop kicked in with what I call a trailing stop. I think we got stopped out on our demo trade with the mini SMP. And then as the trade progressed, the trailing stop moved. And I do have a target. So you look at, a, at a, one of the leading trading platforms in the industry, uh, which is uh, CQG. And you look at how to design trading systems. And when you want to set a new, a new exit, oh, yeah, this one is out of trade. One second, let me go into a different one. You okay. Ask you for a name. Oops, sorry. That's not the exit, that's the entry. Okay. Set new exit. Okay, it asks you what do you want it to be? Money management, break even, dollar risk trailing, percent risk trailing, profit target, entry stop. And this is where I came up with the with the concept that I've been sharing with you that can be applied not just on a per trade basis, but actually uh, to your daily money management. And just like I was talking quite a bit about setting a daily loss limit that we can actually enforce in our software, what is nice about Shogun Trade Executor and that people uh, actually not utilizing it that enough in trading period is when you have a trading day, let's say your goal, you got to set a daily profit target as well. Because how many times have you as a trader, let's say you again, let's take the 10,000 example and you're up $800. You're like, yes, I'm up $800. It's a good day. And your gut instinct tells you that you should say, call it a day. But no, you want to make it a $2,000 day. And sometimes you will, but more often than not, you're going to trade more. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to pay more commission. Now you're going to see $800 going down to $400, and you're going to get upset uh, subconsciously. And before you know it, the $800 profit became a zero, became a negative, or very small profit. And again, this is my personal opinion. But I'm very confident that if every trader set a daily profit target and walks away, they would be ahead than where they are right now. Uh, it's just like an athlete. You know, you don't want to make LeBron James play 48 minutes a game every game, every night. You gotta, you gotta prolong your, your life as a trader. And I've seen traders that sit there from nighttime until the next day in the closing, and they just wear themselves out. They get to the position where they're Tired mentally, tired physically, and they make mistakes. But here on Shogun, well, let's say right now I'm up a certain amount of money. I can actually go ahead and request a risk assessment. And I can send this to the order desk and tell them, you know what, set, set my risk assessment to XYZ level because I want to lock in profits that I made. So very, that's a very important, very important uh, concept. Is Just like you said, uh, a daily loss level, in my opinion, you should also set a daily profit target. And go back over your trading, whatever you trade, and think about it. How many times you're up a certain amount of money and you wish you would have taken it and you didn't, and how much ahead would you be if you did? So as I was showing you from the trading system design, this, this is what I have when I, when I you know, come up with a concept that I want to create into a system. And stops. What is my target? If I have a certain amount of profit, am I going to put a break-even stop? If I have more profit, am I going to have a trailing stop? And if you can apply the same concept into the daily profit and loss, you will be ahead. Okay. Uh, taking a, a small change here into an article I read by Robert Deal, and it's published on a colleague of mine, jimwyckoff.com. And there's more than a few pointers here that you can read that are so true, and the more you repeat it to yourself, the more you understand, the better you'll be as a trader. And this is talking about, a lot of it is what we talked about already, but uh, it's nice to read in a, in a better English, quote unquote, uh, black and white, what he's talking about, about emotional and psychological acceptance of risk, is what determines your mental state in each trade. And again, he says, he's, 
saying the same thing. 90% of traders don't have an idea of their risk tolerance. Okay. Uh, I think this is funny, but so true. Your ego and money can make you broke. Just like this quote about a gambler will lose money as many times as necessary just for the thrill of winning once. So I know we're in a speculative business. Trading is speculative. Uh, but try to be a more sophisticated speculator. Try to be a smart speculator. How can you separate yourself from the herd? What will, what will you do on the mental and psychological level to separate you from the rest? And again, never place a trade without perspective. I think he's talking a lot about longer term trades, but the same goes for day trading. And, and this is really my favorite, and I'll spare you from, from reading it. Just go ahead and read it yourself about the money management as I get prepared for the next slide. Okay, now we're going <clears> to, <throat> again, it's all related into trade management, money management, and trading psychology, but a question is, how do you know if you're successful? I mean, for me, success in the beginning stages, and even now, is following my rules and following my guidelines and not deviating from them. But you also got to, you know, decide what is success as far as trading, as far as a, a money objective as well. So defining success, measuring success, will help you know if you actually achieved it or you're failing. So you got to create clear and objective goals for trade daily, weekly, monthly. And in order to do so, <coughs> uh, this is what I was talking about in an invitation, the best $4.99 that you can invest in trading is a notepad and a pen. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So you got to understand what is good behavior and what is bad behavior. you got to write it down. Then you got to try to train yourself to repeat those actions. The more you repeat those actions, just like you go and you shoot, you know, again, I played basketball, so I use a lot of analogies from basketball. If you're not going to shoot 100 jump shots a day, you're not going to be a great jump shot shooter, no matter how good you are, how talented you are. You know, repetition makes perfect. So just like in trading, just like that in trading, repeat the actions that produce positive results. And you can repeat actions that produce positive results and still have losing days. That's okay. That's part of trading. So try to, in your journal, something that you will write and try to keep track about is my best trade. If you're trading different markets, are you having better success with a certain market than other markets? Uh, how many trades do I trade a day? Uh, is there any <clears throat> pattern here that I'm trading better in the mornings or in lunchtime? The more, it's, the more data you have about yourself, the more information you have about yourself, the better it will help you succeed in trading. And again, I'm going to switch back to over here. And nice thing that you'll find in the Shogun Trade Executor, all the way on the top left corner, is the trade statistics window. I don't think I've done enough trade statistics on this demo, to be honest. So, no, there's no results found because I just didn't do enough trades before the presentation. But that can actually help you evaluate, and instead of you keeping uh, track uh, by hand, you can use the trade statistics from Shogun Trade Executor uh, to help you analyze some of the questions I just went over. And now we're going back again, how to survive. And probably the biggest thing is learn to lose. Learn to accept a loss. It's okay to lose. Uh, actually, in my best trading system, the best trading system that I have is actually only 49% winners. It's the mini Russell trading system. So that means I'm losing more than I'm making money. But it makes money, so far anyway, because it wins more than it loses. But there's a stop loss. And when I get, when I get stopped, yes, I get aggravated. I'll bitch about it. Excuse my language. But the key is to accept it, understand that it's part of trading. Uh, a few other steps that you can take as a trader is after the first hour or two of trading, how are you doing? I'm not just talking about making money. Are you in the groove? Are you in the rhythm? Is your mental and physical state of mind running well? Okay, and that's what I'm talking about. Write a journal. Uh, for me, it did more than a few things. 
it helps put a closure on the trading day. Meaning, let's say you had a good trading day or a bad trading day. Writing it down helps kind of finish your work. Okay, trading is over with for the day. I did my job. I wrote my journal. I, I'm going to keep those notes for future reference. <clears throat> and I'm going to move next. And I want to show you an example of my journal. And the reason I wrote it is for many different reasons, actually. Let me see if we can view it a little bit bigger. Uh, screen. Okay, we'll go with this. So here's what I wrote, and, and I've, I'll update it once in a while. Stick to your money management rules. Then I'm talking a little bit more specific about using volume bar charts on unemployment days rather than time charts. And the reason for that is when big reports come out, a lot of time if you, let's say, using a 15-minute chart, and you're going to wait for the close of the bar to get a signal, so much can happen in 15 minutes. So I use volume chart because when the volume is fast, the volume, the volume bars close much faster. They will generate a trading signal much faster or slower if the market is dead. So here's some of the notes I made, uh, you know, and it helps me because next FOMC meeting, you should have notes from your FOMC meetings from before so you can decide, am I trading FOMC? Is FOMC good for my bonds trading? Should I maybe not trade until after the FOMC? What about if I'm trading crude oil? And there's an API report every Wednesday, uh, 7.30 Pacific time. Should I be trading that day or not? There's no way that one can remember all those little details. And as you can see, there's a lot of different notes that I made, made, excuse me, if it's about FOMC, if it's about minutes, if it's about the bond auction, rollover day. There you go, June 11, rollover day. That's from a year ago, the notes that I made. And this is specifically for a trading system that I'm using, but at least when I see that uh, today is a rollover day and tomorrow is still a rollover period, I'm going to look at my notes and say, okay, I have to do X, Y, Z, and I'm going to keep notes of this one as well. So yeah, that's the 499 that we put in invitation. But if you're like me, uh, I cannot understand my own handwriting. Doesn't matter if I'm writing in Hebrew or in English. I have a terrible handwriting, so I just use a Word document. I save it on my Google Drive. I save it on my memory stick. I just showed you examples of my journal, and I'm going to continue on to the next next step here. Uh, and I. I, I must congratulate all of you for attending the Trading Pub Tradathon. I think education is key. Uh, I've attended many webinars, and I always, always speak up at least one good thing from a good trading webinar. I remember a webinar that gave me the idea of using stops to enter trades instead of going with limits or uh, market because I was waiting for breakout. Uh, another webinar gave me the idea, I forget what it was, but I always if it's a good webinar, you're going to pick up at least a couple of things. So education is a great, great start. Be aware of the overload. And I want to share with you our website again and show you more than a few resources that I think are valuable. So this is canontrading.com. Okay. A couple of things that I want to go over is if you go on the tools, we have daily support and resistance level. This is a daily blog that I write and publish every trading day. And yesterday, you would see that I'm telling my clients, we tell, I'm telling our clients, it's rollover notice. It's time to switch into the March. Okay. Um, we also actually had the invite for this webinar. The support and resistance levels that I published yesterday for today, for those who are using support and resistance. Okay. There is a lot of different uh, information about options, day trading. Here is one of the articles that I mentioned to you, the eight steps of successful trading, uh, order types, uh, recognizing chart patterns, trading calendar, really a lot of good information. And we keep trying to add information as much as we can. Okay. Uh, we do offer the full array of trading services. And by that, I mean, we can accommodate a $2,500 self-directed trading account. We can accommodate a $5 million hedge fund trading account. We can offer you pretty much any trading software. 
If you're a Ninja user, we can offer you pretty much any data feed. We offer broker assist, full service, managed accounts, and trading system. Okay. And again, I'm going to jump one more time from topic to topic, but it's all related. Okay, and that is preparing for the trading day, meaning before you start your trading day, these are some of the steps that you need to take. Uh, what reports are coming out? What time they're coming out? If you're trading, let's say, uh, a 10 tick range bar, take a look at the higher time frames, the, the 15 minutes, the daily, the hourly, etc. Key support and resistance. Make sure you go over your daily statements that if you think that yesterday you traded 10 by 10 and you made $500, that that is what it is. And another thing that is critical, in my opinion, is to fit trading into your schedule and lifestyle and not vice versa. If you're a full-time professional trader, then you do the vice versa as this becomes your job. Okay, we're talking about trading uh, making trading more mechanical. I think, again, it's a key. And that's why I like to have the auto exits in there. And I will adjust them based on what the markets do. But at least as soon as I go in, I know I get a peace of mind that I have a stop, I have a target, and I can look at a chart. I can adjust my stops. I can adjust my targets, etc. Uh, you definitely want to get some sort of a method. You know, I don't think one can just go in there and start trading with instinct or reading the tape. I heard about it. I personally never seen it succeed. Okay, the more mechanical you're going to get uh, trading, the better chances you have of succeeding. And once you do that, no, that's not what I wanted to do. This is where I think people should get as far as being day traders, is you get to the point that you trade out of confidence. And you have confidence in your method. And you have confidence in, in yourself as a trader, as a person, that you can follow your rules and you develop the patience to really wait and, and attack when your setup that you believe in comes and you have the patience and the confidence and the knowledge to know that sometimes it will not work and you lose money, you may get stopped out. And I kind of compare it to being the lion that is waiting patiently for its prey and only attack when the time is right. Maybe I watch a little bit too much Discovery Channel, but that's really how I see successful day traders uh, evolving into if they are successful. Okay, so again, I don't want to discourage anybody. I'm just going to be very blunt with you, and I'm sharing with you, like, how many make it? Not many. I mean, we're a brokerage firm here in California, Beverly Hills, since 1988. So we have the statistics to to go through and understand and really give you a view of who makes and who not. And it's a very, very small percentage. But those who are making it uh, have the following in common. And it's patience, confidence, risk capital. And again, email Kimberly or visit our website for the eight steps for successful trading because I think it, it, it outlines that evolution of a day trader in a good way. Okay, the next slide I think is funny, I think it's uh, appropriate, it's uh, suitable for the topic of trading. And this is definitely not what I wanted to do. Okay, and it's the trader's prayer. When I started working as a commodity broker, uh, I came into the office, it was 1998. Electronic trading barely started, and there's a big, it's actually still in our office. It's a, it's a big poster that is framed, and it's hanging on our wall. It's called the Trader's Prayer, and it's so funny, it's so true, and uh, always makes me smile. So, may I never be facing north when the market's headed south, and may locked limit always be on my side. May the money left on the table be someone else, and may my pockets be deeper than the correction. May I always be five minutes ahead of the market, and may my order have a clear path to the pit. And if this one is a winner, I swear I quit. So that always makes me smile, no matter how many times I've seen it. 
and just understand trading is not a science it's, it's really calculated risk takers it's more of an art to a point but you can translate it and make it quantifiable and that will help you uh, we spoke a little bit about our trading services and I'm displaying for the for you on the screen and then we'll have a few minutes for some question and answers hopefully and if there's still time I can actually go over review a few of the different trade setups that I like just to, to fill in the void okay so I encourage you come visit our website browse see the services we offer uh, you don't have to be either or meaning we have more than a few clients that have a self-directed account but they also have a couple of trading systems that we run for them uh, we have clients that have self-directed but they also have a managed account because they like the results it doesn't have to be either or uh, a lot of times you can diversify your own trading with other trades okay so I spoke about a few different things today which is the eight steps for successful day trading the SFO survivor day trader magazine our Shogun demo uh, any demo for that matter so feel free to visit our website or email Kimberly she's Kim at canontrading.com She'll be happy to provide you with the information. And at this point, I would like to see if there's any questions. And you can ask me pretty much any question you want, and I should be able to answer you based on years of experience. Uh, so I'll be more than happy to, to hear any questions if you do, if you have any. Yes, I'll put out the last last summary screen again. I'll be happy to. And then I'm going to give you an advice about the Russell. Or at least a few tips. So here's the summary summary slide that someone asked to see again, and I will leave it open while we talk about the mini Russell. Uh, the mini Russell, in my opinion, is like a mini S&P on steroids. It moves more. It's more quote unquote bang or zbang to your dollar. Because uh, like today's the ranges on the mini S&P. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick look with you. Uh, let me close out of this formula box. As you can see, my, my automated trading got stopped at on my trailing stop. So here's a mini Russell chart. And I like to use a 36 tick range bar on the mini Russell. And these are some of the signals that I've programmed, okay, along with my support and resistance. So look at the mini Russell. We got 56.90 low, 69.20. So we're looking at about 13 points or $1,300 per contract. Mini S&P actually had a decent range so far today, meaning almost 48 to 34. That's $700 per contract. So Mini Russell is bigger. It's also thinner. So, so a lot of times you can li use limit orders, and if you're patient, you can sell it yourself 30, 40 bucks. Like right now, if you want it, let's go ahead and open Shogun real quick, and let me add the Mini Russell, although I don't think it's on the demo. No, I think the Russell, because it's on ice. Well, actually it is. Excellent. So this is the mini Russell, right? Things are a little bit more exaggerated with the mini Russell versus the mini S&P because it's thinner. Uh, mini Russell today, for example, has 84,000 contracts. Mini S&P is 10 times as much, 80, 860,000 contracts. So I want to go along, let's say, this example. Market is at 64.20. I'd rather take a chance that I'm not going to go along but I'm going to place my limit a few ticks lower just because the moves are wider. The moves are more, there's not hundreds and 200 and 500 contracts waiting to buy and sell in every level. The bid right now is 2 by 13. Uh, so one advice is use limit orders. Try to save money on the entry. Uh, 
Don't be too quick to get out of a big move on the mini Russell. If you feel there's more, more, more room for the move, let it ride. Let it ride because, again, it will sometimes exaggerate the moves. And uh, you can stretch your profits. Uh, personally, if you're a self-directed retail client, I like the mini Russell better than the mini S&P. Yes, it's riskier because the, the value, I mean, the, the moves are bigger both ways. But I think at least it offers you some ranges and, and a chance to make money because the moves are wider. Uh, so that is one thing that I like about the Mini Russell. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Well, big, here's a good question here. Uh, for beginner futures trader, which market you think is good? I think it depends on the account size. But uh, mini mini Dow is actually a good market because it moves yet it doesn't it's not going to harm you too fast or too hard. It's still obviously risky. Uh, I also like the ten year note and the treasury bonds. They offer different personality of traders. So it really depends on your account size and risk tolerance. If you're a little bit more on the aggressive side, the mini crude oil may be a good market to explore as well. Okay. Uh, here's a good question by Perry. The Shogun platform looks very much like Infinity AT platform. What are the main differences? You're absolutely right. Shogun is a white label of the transact. It's uh, what Canon Trading put effort and time into making it better. And the main differences are uh, the daily risk level that you can actually do on your own, the trade statistics, uh, the coloring, in the dome, as well as some customized templates that go into the charting package. Another question, uh, what percent of people actually make it with futures? And when they do so, is it common to make a thousand day fairly consistently? Again, it's very hard to, to answer this because you got to define what is making it. And then making a thousand dollars a day, I have clients that make it in two seconds because they're trading with half a million, and I have a clients that that don't make it in a week because they're trading with twenty five hundred. If I had to throw a number out there of the percent of traders that actually make it is what I define as making it, I'm going to say about three percent. Okay. Uh, Another question is, what approach do you find best with trading the NASDAQ? Uh, there's a few different approaches that I, I think are useful for day trading. And it really depends on what type of trading day we're facing. Uh, there are certain trading days where you want to use overbought, oversold indicators because the, the market is locked in a range. Meaning, let's say it goes, mini NASDAQ will go, let me see. 37.85, maybe we'll visit the 75 level, then go back to visit 3,800, but doesn't have a strong trend. That is more suitable for using indicators such as RSI and stochastic, along with support and resistance, trying, trying to trade the ranges and understanding that there's good chances that the market will not have a big move up or down. On the other way, uh, on days that there's a strong trending day or strong move one way or the other, you got to look for entry with a trend. And what I do then is I look, I actually use a volatility system indicator. As you can see, this is a volatility system indicator. So if I'm using this indicator that I can also add, let's go ahead and add, uh, where is one of my indicators? Let me, let me add an indicator as well and I'll show you what I mean. Here's an indicator. So if I believe that there's a, there's, a, there's a chance for a strong move one way or the other, I will not take signals that are long today. I will wait for signals that are short because the market is trading below my volatility system. So as long as I'm trading below my volatility system, I'm going to look perhaps for crossovers here on the other side. Okay. And if, it, if I believe that today is a day where we are trading the range and is a range bound, they, I can put an RSI over here and mark, let me see, mark the 30 or the 25% mark. 
And when the market go and touches that level, if I feel that we're near support, I'll take a chance and go along using a stop below the previous low. Uh, so really, the, one of the biggest questions uh, any trader, a new trader, should ask himself and try to assess during the first 30 minutes of trading or so is, what, what type of trading day are we going to have? Uh, does it look like there's a big ranges overnight? Is there volatility? Is there volume? Uh, I'm going to guess that 80% of the day trading uh, days in the stock indexes anyway are, are what I call range bound, meaning there will be a 8 to 15 point range on the mini S&P. The range is going to be established during the first hour or so. And then we're going to visit different support resistance levels, uh, trade up, trade down, etc. There is actually very few days where you see big, strong moves that are just non-stop. And that's just an observation. Uh, that may change as the you know as we progress in time and the markets are changing. But as of today, I honestly believe that most trading days are are range bound trading days. And the question is how wide is the range and how volatile it is and what tools will work most of the time. Let me see. Let me see another. Again, thanks, thanks for the comment, uh, Tom. Tom mentioned, Ilan, you're, you're always refreshing of honesty. And uh, I believe this business is tough. Trading is not easy. Uh, and I really do dislike, uh, not, not everybody, but some of those people out there that try to sell clients and traders and newcomers that crystal ball, because there is really no crystal ball. It takes it takes risk capital, it takes hard work, it takes certain personality, and it's really, it is what it is, and, and people need to understand that. Uh, here's another, somebody asked to see an example of my notes, and I'll be more than happy to show you more of my notes. And again, those are specific notes for an automated trading system that I designed, yet I still want to know, hey, if it's rollover day, do I trade June or the September? If it's FOMC day, is it smart for me or wise for me to shut down my system until after the meeting or maybe vice versa or maybe just let it run? So here are some of my notes. Let me see, go down. Now we're going back in time, all the way back to 2011. And here's something that I actually still, still believe in and do. What I wrote, need to stop trading a few days before Christmas and resume after New Year. Reason being is that volume thins out. Uh, the traders that we are considered professional traders that actually do that for a living will take advantage of this time of the year and take a vacation. So the market starts taking a weird personality and doesn't doesn't trade as well as for me anyway for my, the model. Uh, another another note that is mostly on a technical basis. Uh, after Martin Luther King holiday, this, my CTG did not recognize the fault and schedule on Monday and figured trades outside the program trading hours, okay? So I made notes what I need to do for those what we call long, long uh, weekends. Let's see if I have any other notes. Uh, unemployment, monthly unemployment. As I mentioned before, that's when I usually switch to volume chart. And I think here's a good tip for you guys, I believe. If you're a day trader, let me show you a couple of things here real quick. Let me let me replicate that real quick. Replicate. Okay, put this up here. And let's make this a uh, one minute chart. Oh, three, let's make a three minute chart. Okay, here's a three minute chart of the Russell. Let me take some of the indicators out so we can see more charts and less less indicators. So here's a three minute chart with some of the signals that I like to use. Okay. And you'll see that when the market is dead, this is like the middle of the night, there's no action. Signals are being generated for no reason just because of mathematical vol uh, value. Okay. Over here is a, a range bar chart. Okay. And what a range bar does, it looks for a certain range. In this case, I decided to use 36.6. 6. 
So until the market does not create 36.6 above or below, it's not going to create a new bar. So if we're trading between, you know, three-point range on the, on the mini Russell, back and forth, back and forth, it's still going to be the same bar. So the bar can be uh, seven hours, like in this case, or it can be 38 minutes, like in this case. And when the market really moves, 8.35 to 8.45, 10 minutes. Uh, so really, the, the, that type of chart helps helps you see the market as the market adjusts to volume and speed and volatility without you having to do too much around it. So I like to use the range bar. Uh, I also like to use, let me show you, I like to use volume chart. I think volume chart is good. Be honest, let's see on the mini Russell, we probably want to use uh, let's try 900 contract volume. And again, this is no crystal ball by any means, but I put I put a volume chart with my with the, the extreme oversold, extreme overbought, and I and I can see two signals that were really good signals on the mini Russell. So I would much rather use a volume chart, a range bar, Renko over a minute chart for any time frame less than 15 minutes. And that's an advice that I think if you're a new trader or an existing trader, you could take. Play around with it, meaning go into your chart and and start using a range bar, start using a volume bar, compare it to what you've been using so far if you haven't been doing so, and see if this is something that helps you or not. And another advice is always try new ideas in simulation mode and demo mode. I remember more than a few times that I saw something that I was so excited about that I decided to trade in live account after just looking at it for two hours, and that turned out to be a big mistake. So take your time, be patient. You want to try a new a new concept? You want to add something into your trading? Be be tough on yourself, and trade it in a week or two in simulation mode. It's not easy because you want to go and trade it live, especially if you see that it made money the first few days in live in simulated mode. But be patient. You're going to learn a lot more and have much more experience after a few more days of uh, you using that new concept. Let's say. Okay, here's another question from Eric. He said, I remember you have a trading room. It wasn't really a trading room, but a few years ago, it developed from... Uh, a lot of clients that were mentioning to me different trading rooms that they went to, different indicators, that they were spending money on this and that. Um, very few of those outside sources, quote unquote educators, were worthy in my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. So I decided, you know, I spent so much time on, on testing different approaches, different indicators, different algorithm. Why don't I share it with clients? So I used to have a, what we call a, a, a live trading webinar where I would sh just share my screen just like you see it right now and clients would log in there was a PDF file that would go with it that explained the concept but it, I wasn't able to attend it properly and spend the right time for it so what I did is I created those algorithms and indicators in a PDF file and if anybody's interested they sign up I'll show you where on Canon trading website and then you can actually get a free trial to put on your own chart you can use it with a Shogun trading chart or with CQG. And if you go to Tools, Intraday Trading Signals, you will see a little bit about the service, a few screenshots. Here are some screenshots from uh, Shogun trading chart. Okay. And it comes with a PDF. Again, this is something that uh, people can try and see if it helps them in the trading or not. It is a counter-trend type of trading approach. So it's not for everyone, and it will do well on, on days that are more range-bound. However, if you look at a day where there's a big, big move up or down, you can get uh, you can get stopped that time after time after time. But yes, good memory, Eric. And that's about it. We have about two and a half minutes to go. And I think if you are attending the Tradathon, uh, and you've been here for about, what, four hours now, give or take, even more, and you have many more presentations ahead of you, take a couple of minutes break and, uh, and go from there. Uh, one more question, and then if anybody has other questions, please do so now. Shogun does not work with a map. 
Uh, unless you're running the Windows parallel on the Mac, Shogun will not work. We do have a couple of other trading platforms that will work on the Mac. And again, all you need to do is visit our website. And let's go into our website one more time. Easiest thing is go over here and send us a message. Whatever the message you want to send us, put the information, send it. You will get answered within one business day, if not sooner. So I want to say thank you to all of you. I, I appreciate you attending. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate you putting up with my somewhat sporadic presentation at times, jumping from subject to subject. But I think for those that attended the full presentation, you get you get the the bulk of what I'm trying to share with you, and hopefully you'll do some homework. Decide about what is your daily loss limit. Think about your trading psychology. Think about what you can to do from the mental aspect of things to make trading better. And I wish all of you uh, successful trading and good trading. And just, again, appreciate uh, you taking the time. So thanks again, uh, Yana and the Trading Pub, and thanks again for all of you, and I hope to see you in future presentations. Again, you, you welcome everybody and thank you.